Introducing D-Lab's Altered State Solid State Cinema. This is a new shop that's being created to support solid state electronic repair as well as surface mount. Now I know you guys have seen that in the past, but that was in my other shop, Tube Amp Theater, right? So we're going to dedicate a new shop to simply support solid state work. Here it is. So what we got here is my dad's toolbox and this contains all my precision tools required for working on solid state equipment. And look right there, this was actually his slot car racing toolbox. So it's going to be very cool to put that thing to use. All right? so now we have some shelves. i got a dog down here, it's kind of tripping me up. Anyway, we've got all the necessary components here to do solid state work. I have a microscope with the light. I bought a new Agilent oscilloscope. It's a DSO 6032A. And that cost me quite the chunk of change, my friends. So we have to get some solid state work, right? Got some solder stations here. Nice surface mount machine. Little Heiko, which you've seen in my other shop. Up here is my parts inventory for most of the solid state work. On the bench here, we have the audio generator, which I will use to inject signals. This little amplifier here will be used to listen to the signals through this little speaker right and guess who makes the amp that's right Dayton Electronics all right now over here I have my core computer that has all the schematics that I need PDF files so I can look up things of course which will help me because I don't want to have paper schematics we live in a paperless society people right now the other thing about solid-state cinema is up in Tube Amp Theater, you guys know I drink red wine, right? In solid state cinema, being an altered state, D-Lab will always be drinking white wine. But it's still Robert Mondavi, right? And as a snack, I've got some oyster crackers. Because that's what we do, altered state, D-Lab Electronics. So what's the first item we're going to fix in solid state cinema? We have a Rocktron Replaflex. Okay, this is a very vintage piece of equipment, and most people that own these things swear by them. I don't get too many of them in the shop. They're pretty reliable, but the most common failure with these are these encoders. So you have these little knobs that do your pre-selects and your adjustments. And unfortunately, they take a little impact and they'll cause problems. So let me show you what's going on. It was sent to me from a fellow in Tracy, California. And the complaint is, is that the preset control acts erratic. Okay. So this has an encoder, right? It's kind of a little optical switch. So as you turn this, each position, you should see an update on this display. And as you can see, I can only choose between two presets, okay? Usually, you'd be able to count right on up to 128, but it doesn't want to go any further than those two, right? So that's a prime indication of a defective encoder, right? So let's say I wanted to adjust preset one. So I would come over here to the function switch okay let me zoom out very slowly so as I were to adjust the function switch you would see these different items come up these different menus right so you see how that increments nicely and if I were to go to the parameters they also increment nicely that tells me that these encoders are fine but this one is obviously damaged so let me show you an easy way to replace that encoder so as with any electronic device, we're going to turn it off, disconnect the power feed. Now, what I'm going to do is simply remove the front panel. I'm not going to pull the whole circuit board out of the case because you can get to these encoders when you remove just this front panel. That part of the circuit board is exposed. Okay, so these knobs pop off pretty easy. 
and then you take out these nuts and there's six screws and that front will fall right off. So I've removed the nuts from these controls and then there's three screws on the top and three screws on the bottom. So at this point you can take this front panel rock him up very carefully and it'll pop off exposing the encoders and that display word of caution do not contact that display if you hit it you'll break it and then you're going to be seriously bummed out All right? so let's lay it down let's get this encoder out all right, so here's the encoder that we're going to replace, and here is the replacement unit. All right? One way to determine what happened to that encoder is to take a look at this back plate. You see this one? See how it's flush and it's flat? Okay, let's take a look at the back of this one. Swoop up here. You see that bow in the plate? That means that the shaft at one time took an impact and it pushed out that back plate okay and probably damaged the little encoder wheel in the process now the other issue is take a look at this guy you can see you can't even see the leads right so what you would think is well I need to desolder it and then rock this guy and get him off the board but what the problem is this is a dual sided circuit board so if you do that and you're rough, you're going to destroy the unit and you're going to be seriously bummed out, right? So what is the best way to get that encoder out? That's right, the old clippity doo dies, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get under here and I'll cut the grounds and then I'm going to get underneath and I'm going to cut the three conductors and I'll lift that thing off the board then I'm going to pull the leads out like teeth. Alright, so here we go. To give yourself a little more room, you can pop these little switch covers off. Okay, so they went to these little buttons. Take those off, gives you a little more room to navigate. So you're gonna take your wire cutters. You need some really sharp, good ones now. You're gonna get in here, go a little high. We're gonna cut these grounds first. Okay, you take your time, don't get in a rush. Work your way back and forth, and they're going to clip right off. All right, so I have broken the grounds. So you can see now this guy will flex, right? And if you just flex him back and forth, those three leads are going to break right off. It's going to take a few times to do this, all right? So I'll cut back to it. So there is the dead soldier. The old encoder's out. You can see there's still the frame here, which are the grounds. We're going to need to remove those. And then down in there will be the three leads that went to the encoder inner workings. Those are a little bit trickier to get out, okay? But once again, you take your time. So first thing I'm going to do is get these ground pieces out of here. Now you got to be super careful because these little switches here and over there, if you touch those with your soldering iron, you're going to melt them. So you got to be very careful, take your time. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of these little ground ears, okay? That was the pieces of metal that I cut from the top. If you look at the bottom of the board, you'll see these little tabs, and they actually put a little bit of a twist on them. So the first thing you have to do is take your soldering iron, we're going to heat these, and we're going to straighten these tabs out. Then I'll be able to grab from the bottom side with long nose and they'll fall right out. So this is kind of difficult for me to shoot and do at the same time, but I'll do my best. Heat these guys up, turn it, heat it up again, and out they come. Okay. Be very cautious when you're around these little plastic switches, because if your soldering iron touches them, it'll melt them. All right, it's the same deal. I'll do the other ear. You take your time. That's my best advice. Take your time. She's almost out. 
problem to go top side in this one. All right, we're top side to finish the operation. This one's a little stubborn. She'll come out. Oh yeah, there it goes. So next, we need to remove these three leads, okay? Now remember, you can't heat it and pull them from the bottom of the board because there's little flanges on the top where they used to taper out to go into the control. So you need to actually heat these up and we're going to push them down into the board. Then we'll go top side and heat them and pop them out. All right, so here we go. Like I said, I'm just going to heat these up and I'm going to push them down, okay? So that they protrude from the top of the board and I can get a hold of them. Once again, a little bit of a tricky operation, but they will fall right out, believe me. Okay, this middle one's playing games with me. Anyway, you get the idea. So they're protruding up. Pretty much heat them up. Grab some precision long nose pliers and pop them out. Just like teeth. And so I have leads out of the holes. Now we're going to take some solder wick, good quality solder wick, like Chemtronics. We've got to clear those holes. So the best way to use solder wick is first off, wet the tip of your iron a little bit, put the wick under your iron, put it over the hole you want to clear, and it will pull that solder right up. But a little assistance from wetting the tip goes a long way. And also the solder wick also heat sinks the hole so it doesn't damage the foil as easy as if you try to do it without it. So the hard part is over, right? You got everything desoldered, the holes are cleared, you're ready to take the new encoder and drop him in place, okay? Now don't have a heart attack if you see a little bit of a lifting on these two little ground mounts because they actually don't go to circuit ground. They're just there to solder the encoder in to give it some, you know, support while it's in operation. So the new encoder's in place. Before you solder it, make absolutely sure that it's seated flush and that all your leads are coming through, right? So now we'll solder it up and retest. All right, so there we go. New encoder's installed. Put the little button caps back on. I'm gonna plug this thing in. Kick her on. Turn off my light. Now let's see if the new encoder works. Look at there. Just like it should. Excellent. See, I told you that wasn't bad. For the front panel installation, the easiest way, set this guy up on his end, keep it balanced. And then you're going to take the panel and set him back over, making sure everything's in alignment. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky because this metal likes to collapse in the center. So you may need to take a little screwdriver and kind of pull that flat back, get it to seat down. Word of caution, all these little LEDs right here, they need to pop back through the openings. So a lot of guys I've seen, they'll go in here and they'll put it together and these LEDs will be pushed back. And guess what? You get to tear it all back apart and do it again. One other quick note before you install the panel, make sure that these little spacer washers are here because you just put in a new encoder the old one had them make sure to put them back on and if you see any fingerprints or smudging on this glass you can wipe it off very gently with some windex so that doesn't show through and kind of get your customer upset at you for being a hack all right so i was able to get her back in and i did have to take a little tweaker and kind of pull this metal up for that lip to go under no big deal 
So before you put these screws in, just put these nuts on finger tight, right? Verify all of your alignment. Verify that these little buttons still push because sometimes they'll get jammed too. And then get all the nuts on, tighten her up, put the screws in. You're pretty much on your way home. Another word of caution when you're putting these nuts on here, use a nut driver and only make them finger tight. Don't put a ratchet on here and crank on it, okay? You just damage your encoders again. They don't require that much torque. All right, let's give it an operational checkout. I've got it connected to my audio generator and a little amplifier to monitor it. So we've got a signal going through it right now. And if I do the different selections, it should do some crazy stuff. good to go. A successful encoder replacement here at Solid State Cinema, D-Lab's Altered State. If you were to attempt to do this yourself, it's about an hour job, but what takes more than time is patience. And if you don't feel comfortable working on equipment like this, feel free to send it to me, Terry here D-Lab, and I'll feature your unit on the next Solid State Cinema.